So Tuesday's a big day. Donald Trump makes the journey north to the courthouse in downtown Manhattan. The trip is history in the making, the first former president in history to face criminal charges. Never has a president been booked, fingerprinted, and sat for a mugshot. Notably, and word is that this is a Secret Service ask for security reasons, Trump will not be handcuffed. And then off to court where it becomes official. The indictment is unsealed, the charges read, and the judges question, how do you plead? And that's just the beginning. What happens next? This is the record. How did we get to this point, and where are we now? John Huddy is live at Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida. John? Yeah, and Mar-a-Lago is just over my shoulder on the other side of the bridge here, uh, Greta. There's been supporters of former President Trump showing out throughout the afternoon. A lot of people have laughed, look, it's hot. You know, the sun has been beating down, so people are probably heading out, getting dinner. Uh, we're hearing more people maybe showing up after they get off work, going into the evening as temperatures cool down. That remains to be seen. But we have seen supporters showing up, much like they did, as you recall, and we were here after the raid on Mar-a-Lago back in uh, August of last year. But it's pretty quiet now, frankly, Greta. It really, it's more media than anything at this point. And that kind of goes with the, the terrain. That's usually the case in these type of um this type of coverage. That said, as far as the timeline leading up to this point, I think it's good for our viewers to kind of know, and I'm going to go through the main bullet points going back, and really this goes back to 2006, when Stormy Daniels, the adult film actress, Stephanie Clifford is a real name, said she first met Donald Trump at a celebrity event in Lake Tahoe, and she says she slept with him at the hotel there. Now, fast forward to August of 2018, when Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, admits that he arranged payments to Stormy Daniels' lawyers before the 2016 election, what we have been referring to as these quote-unquote hush money payments. And that's when former Manhattan DA Cyrus Cy Vance opened an investigation not only to these payments, but uh, also subpoenaing Trump Organization financial and tax records, so looking into the finances of the organization. Over the next couple of years, Greta, the investigation really heats up and intensifies in July 2021. The Trump Organization is charged with running a 15-year tax scheme. And then in January of 2002, well, that's when uh, Evan Braggs is sworn in as the new Manhattan District Attorney. Now, in February, the following month, February 2022, and we talked about this recently on the show, two of his top prosecutors, Mark Pomerantz and uh, uh, Kerry Dunn, resigned in protest over Bragg's decision not to initially indict former President Trump. And Pomerantz ends up going and writing a book about his experiences there uh, as a prosecutor in the DA's office. Well, then, in August of 2022, Braggs then reopens the investigation into former President Trump and the Trump Organization, and CFO Alan Wilsonberg specifically pleads guilty to criminal charges, later, as we know, going to jail. That then takes us to January 2023, earlier this year, when uh, uh, DA Bragg panels a grand jury, and that brings us to the present. Uh, as I mentioned, Greta, throughout the day, Trump supporters have been showing up here, and we talked to two ladies earlier, and I asked them, well, quite simply, why they were here. Listen. We're all upset over what Bragg did. I mean, he, he's taken our legal system and, and politicized it. And that shouldn't be done to Republicans, Democrats, or anybody. This is not going to change us a bit with us. It's going to make him stronger, make us madder and stronger. He's still going to get our vote. So how long do you plan to be out here? Are you, gonna be out here all day, all night? Are, you re are you ready for this? Till the cows come home. Well, the cows must have come home because they left a little while ago. Uh, they said they're going to be back and their friends as well. We'll see. Uh, but as far as what's happening inside Mar-a-Lago, Greta, we understand former President Trump remains there. He's talking to his senior advisors. And also the Secret Service is determining uh, what is the best way, the most, the safest way to get him, number one, to New York? He only has to go a short uh, distance to PBI, Palm Beach International Airport, where his jet is waiting. And then once in New York, the Secret Service needs to work with the NYPD to get him, you know, to get the proceedings going on Tuesday. So when he's going to leave, there have been reports that could be Monday, but that remain, that hasn't been confirmed as of that, Greta. Back to you. John Huddy, thank you.
And today, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg releasing a letter defending former President Trump's indictment. National correspondent Logan Raddick is here with the details of that letter. Logan? Well, Greta, the reason Bragg sent that letter to members of Congress, particularly GOP leadership, it's in response to them calling on him to testify about his prosecution of former President Donald Trump. And House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says, quote, Alvin Bragg has irreparably damaged our country in an attempt to interfere in our presidential election. The House of Representatives will hold Alvin Bragg in and his unprecedented abuse of power to account. Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who, if you recall, came in second in the GOP primary to Donald Trump back in 2016, he said Thursday that it was a tragic day for America and that, quote, this left-wing Soros DA has decided to use the power of his office to indict Donald Trump. Facts and law be damned. And House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan calls the indictment, quote, outrageous, while House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer says Alvin Bragg must testify before Congress. This is not a local investigation. This is a federal investigation. He's investigating a presidential candidate, not to mention former president of the United States, for a federal election crime. Uh, that has no business uh, being litigated in a local district attorney's office. But Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg wrote to Comer and other top Republicans saying in part, quote, what neither Mr. Trump nor Congress may do is interfere with the ordinary course of proceedings in New York State. Secrecy is critical to protecting the privacy of the target of any criminal investigation as well as the integrity of the independent grand jury's proceedings. But even the left-leaning Washington Post editorial board admits that Trump probably won't be found guilty, writing, quote, this prosecution needs to be airtight, otherwise it's not worth continuing. Now, Trump is still the favorite to win the GOP nomination for president in 2024. He and his allies are also using this indictment to help raise money for his campaign. So again, Greta, Trump is getting indicted. He's going to be heading to New York next week, but he thinks that this can help him in the long run. Well, the big curious thing is that if there is a trial, when, when that trial will be, which is another whole long, that's another whole show. Anyway, Logan Raddick, thank you. Thank you. Of course, everyone is talking about and tweeting about former President Trump's indictment. Everyone has a thought to share, including a very powerful Democrat. But oops, she got it so, so wrong, so painfully wrong. I'm not talking about the facts. We need to wait for the trial for the facts, but about something profoundly basic and even more profoundly important, because it has to do with the Constitution. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi took to Twitter last night and tweeted to her 8.1 million followers this, quote, the grand jury has acted upon the facts and the law. No one is above the law, and everyone has the right to a trial to prove innocence. Hopefully, the former president will peacefully respect the system which grants him that right. Okay, so painfully wrong, yes, but it is true. Everyone has a right to trial, but no one accused ever, ever, ever has to prove anything, let alone innocent. She's dead wrong about that. That's just wrong, false. And she did that to 8.1 million of her followers, and they may have seen that on such an electrifying topic as the indictment of a former president of the United States. I usually stay out of the Twitter food fights between politicians, but last night, as a, as a lawyer, when I saw her tweet, I quickly corrected it and added this to it. I replied to her tweet and said, and by the way, juries do not determine innocent or not. They determine whether the prosecution has proven guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And then today, Twitter came to the rescue to clear up her glaring misunderstanding with the tweeted feature called Community Notes. That is where Twitter users can add context or even correct other users' tweets. That note points out that error and also shares a link to a Cornell Law School webpage for proof. It reads as follows, quote, Ms. Pelosi mistakenly says that Trump can prove his innocence at trial. Law in the U.S. assumes the innocence of a defendant, and the prosecution must prove guilt for a conviction. California Congressman, member of the House Judiciary Committee, and member of the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, Daryl Issa, joins me. Good evening, sir. And I don't know if the Good former speaker up. tweeted that out or if a staff member tweeted it out, but I wish she would pull it down, only because we got to try to strip away at least sort of the, some of the basic understanding of the system, and a defendant never has to prove anything. But let me ask you this. Um, oh. Since the news broke... Since the news broke, has, have there been calls among the Republican delegation in Congress? What's being said? Well, we've been obviously exchanging uh, the background on it, including uh, former Speaker Pelosi's uh, Freudian slip, if you will, that uh, uh, because, you know, look, they've tried the president, found him guilty before he was ever elected. They found him guilty of collusion with the Russians, except it turned out it was... Uh, the uh, 
former Secretary of State that actually uh, was involved in that. They found him guilty uh, twice uh, and impeached him only to fail when it actually was scrutinized. So this is just another example of guilty till proven innocent. Uh, I do think that regardless of the Constitution of the law, that the president is going to be able to make it very clear that he is innocent. Um, he's innocent in a number of ways, not the least of which is the one that uh, Chairman Comer p pointed out, which is this is a federal offense they're accusing him of, and a well, district attorney for one borough shouldn't is be charging it. Well, in the, what, what the Manhattan DA says, look, as we try to strip away all the, you know, the politics on this, I mean, because it's a very serious case. I mean, the underlying charge actually is not very serious. I mean, I mean, no one is above the law. I don't know if he's guilty of it. I know I don't even see the indictment. But fundamentally, it's it's not. I mean, it's not a big heavy lift charge. But you know, but in order to have some integrity to the system, is that if he has this committee all of a sudden reaching in and saying, we insist that you testify, it it does sort of add another layer to this where there at least, you know, people see this as a total, you know, a, a total exercise and I don't know why. Why not let him try the cases and, and whether it's good or bad or terrible that he does that or politically motivated and have Congress stay out of it until the end? Well, Greta, you're exactly right. Uh, I don't believe Congress is going to directly interfere and the chairman's point really was that this is a, this should be in federal court if anywhere. Uh, the, uh, the fact though is the, it's not going to be in federal court. Let me just stop you there. It won't be in federal court, at least as it stands, because the federal prosecutors did take a run at it, and they decided that it was not a case that should be prosecuted by the federal government. Absolutely. But it is, it is, it is a campaign question that, that we're being told will be in the actual indictment when it's unsealed. Greta, here's the basic fact that is, look, I don't want to disregard a district attorney but if you run for office saying you're going to indict somebody and it's a campaign pledge, uh, that's a little bit further than any law enforcement person. I mean, it's one thing to say I'm going to uh, enforce the law. It's another thing to say I'm going to indict somebody and then take, you know, a long time to get to do it, long enough that there's a real debate about whether the statute has run on this this alleged crime to begin with. Well, but I'd like, I'd like I'll to go back to I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, let me tell you a point that I don't think anyone's looking at in terms of, and this is just probably plays into to your position, is that in January 2022, um, he became, Bragg became, Alvin Bragg, the new DA. And a month later, he says he's not prosecuting it. Okay, stop. There's no more evidence collected, no nothing. And then all of a sudden, a year later, he suddenly says, okay, now we're going to do that. What was the intervening thing that made him change his mind when he had collected no more evidence? There is no collection of evidence that suddenly decides, okay, now we're going to do this. What happened? Was, you know, what was, the the, what, what was the provocation? Was that, you know, that's what I want to know. Probably that President Trump is ahead in the polls and is a presidential candidate had more than a little to do with it. Uh, but, you know, Greta, let's put this in perspective. They call it hush money. They have a lot of, of, of things that they're talking about. But you and I both have seen corporate money and personal money pay for indiscretion of, of individuals for years. And they're most often, very often paid through a lawyer's account. So each one of the elements, you've seen it before, uh, you know, I'll make a point. You saw it at your former employer, some uh, uh, a number of those uh, at the other uh, the network. Uh, but you've seen it everywhere. As a matter of fact, and I make a point of this, the United States Congress has paid hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and, based on allegations that's against great, members of Congress. And that's a great segue for something I have to say about that coming up that I think is probably going to sizzle some members of Congress. Anyway, Congressman Darrell Issa, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta. And look, sizzle them away. They, it deserves to be <laughs> I don't as think they're publicly gonna like it. said I don't as think, anything. I don't think they're going to like it. But anyway, thank you, sir.